Welcome back everyone. So I have some news. Um, the Honda ADV 160 is just about ready to hit the road. Unfortunately, the weather hasn't been playing nicely. It's going to snow tomorrow. It's late March 2024 for the reference. Um, but we're all registered. I got a plate frame that I custom painted with some leftover silver I had from my stereo shop. And uh, that's gonna look nice. Tommy wants to say hi. Hi, Tommy. Bye, Tommy. So I've got a, um, a phone mount for this. And I picked this up at a local motorcycle, um, a Cycle Gear store. It's the name of the store. It's a chain, Cycle Gear. And um, I forget the make on that one. But if you're looking to buy, ah, uh, here it is. I have the package right here. This is a tech mount. It retails for $60. Um, so if you've got, you know, a Honda ADV 160 or 150, uh, this will fit. Um, possibly even other models. Um, the For reference, the ADV 160 has a 28 millimeter diameter handlebar. So it'll fit most standard motorcycle accessories within the limited space that they give you. Uh, this mount includes several adapters, so I could probably mount it here where the bar appears to taper a little bit, but I chose to leave it in the middle. That's where I wanted it. And this expands. And I believe it's a standard ball mount, so other ball type accessories and other phone mounts may just fit right on that collar as well. Now, the other piece of this is I need to run a cable to charge my phone um, which I will be using, by the way, as a GPS mostly. Um, so, I also picked up some riding gear. I got some uh, some nice some nice gloves. Um, minimal riding equipment. If you're just getting into motorcycling, look, nobody's going to go out and buy expensive riding boots when they're riding something like this. Not only will they not fit on the floorboards, but it'll be kind of uncomfortable. Um, I always wear sneakers, closed shoes. Do not be wearing sandals. That's a no-no. Wear gloves. No matter how short your ride is, wear gloves. Having been down a few times myself, I've explained this in other videos, gloves are a lifesaver because most of the skin damage that I've gotten were on my hands. Um, in fact, I still have a scar right here in my palm from when I went down on my Helix uh, over, what, 14 years ago? <laughs> it's been a few years. Um, 10, 10, 10, 11, 12 years ago? Anyway. Um, I picked up a helmet. So just to show a little demonstration here, I picked up this helmet uh, that fits nicely underneath. I went with matte black because it doesn't scratch up as easily. Um, the gloss black ones tend to look pretty ragged very quickly. So go with a matte black helmet. It's not gonna look so bad. So all that I have to do now is I have to drill a hole in this storage compartment so I can plug in my phone. Now, I don't wanna be tearing apart the nose of the scooter. So I'm gonna have to go up inside with a flashlight and see where that hole needs to be. Um, I was thinking of putting it somewhere on the bottom here because it's easily accessible and I can just run the cable up through the tree that way. But um, we'll do that later on. We have, <clears throat> we have things to do, so um, I'll do that uh, later on this weekend or maybe even tonight. So hold that thought. Okay, got the... the the hill is drilled, the hole is drilled, and I've taken this wooden um, stick to guide the cable up through the proper, to guide the cable up through the proper route, because we don't want it to get um, pinched anywhere. We're just going to tape the cable to this and pull it through. All right, so I should be able to just pull this up. I've already got the cable down in here. We can kind of dress it up later. But look at that. That's how I got the cable through. 
I'm going to untape it. So this way, the cable is going to be routed in such a way that it's not going to interfere with steering. It'll have enough slack. I bought a very durable cable. Uh, this cable was not cheap, but it should sure do the trick. So um, let's, let's uh, make sure we have enough slack here. So the phone's going to sit right about there. <coughs> and what I'm going to do is I'm going to route it through the um, through here. See what I just did there? I unclipped using a factory clamp. Put enough of a pigtail there when I'm not using it. I can just tuck it down like that. Now on this end, I'm going to zip tie it. Uh, probably to um, probably zip tie it to these brake cables. And then we're going to tuck the rest of it inside this pocket. All right, so that's it. So the cable is it's tied here. So it doesn't interfere. It's tied up there. And I put a, a strain relief knot inside the box. Water won't get in there. Um, it's highly unlikely because of the, uh, the way the front of the bike is designed. Um, if it were possible to put a grommet around the cable, I would have done that, but that's just not gonna be an option here. Um, cable snakes up there and it's up and out of the way. So now I can just snap my phone to this little mount here. So you make sure I'm doing this without getting the phone all tied up in the mount like that. So I'm going to plug it in. And off the bat, I don't get any um, power because it's a switched receptacle. So I'm going to turn the bike on. Is it on now? It is now. Here we go. All right. I think it's on. Yeah, that appears to work just fine. So we're good to go. Shut the uh, key off. <clears throat> and then again when I'm not using the charger I could just tuck it down there doesn't get in the way of any cabling life is good now I could just switch it to this side if I want to so the phone goes in the other way which I might actually do um, but anyway all right we got things we got to do today so I gotta go thank you for watching and um, by the way the drill size I used and the cable I used I used a scosh um ruggedized um the a thunderbolt cable or lightning cable thunderbolt or i can never get the two <laughs> i think it's lightning um i have the thunderbolt cape lightning cable by skosh um it is a ruggedized model we have a tech mount um ball mount universal ball mount for the phone um, I used uh, the drill bit to fit the USB, excuse me, the lightning end, thunderbolt end. Why do I, I, why couldn't they have done two different unrelated things like tsunami? Let's call it a tsunami cable. I'm an Apple technician by trade and I can never get the terms straight in my head. I can't help it. <laughs> I'm helpless, guys. I've been doing this for 20 years and I still, still to this day, <clears throat> Anyway, if you know, you know. Okay, so the drill bit size we used um, is a 27 64th, which everybody has in their toolbox. Um, the three quarter was not big, or the three eighths was not big enough. I had to go up a few sizes. 
Probably could have just used a half inch, um, but that's a big hole. I didn't want to do that. All right. Thank you all for watching. Have a great day. And I'll be on this thing very soon. In fact, I'm going to try to document my first mile on this um, just so that I can kind of share a, a real life, real, uh, real time um, thoughts on what I think of the ADV 160 here in the U.S. Okay. All right. We got things to do. Got to go. Bye. Okay, so I um, I made a decision regarding this job. So I decided that I would be remiss if I did not put a proper grommet sized correctly into this hole. And what that's going to do is prevent just casual amounts of water from splashing up into here. Now this pocket has... Um, I, I believe there's a drain somewhere in this pocket. I know I saw some holage for just that reason. Um, so, like I said, I, I you know, I want to do this right. I don't want to botch anything. I don't want it half-assed. You know, I paid a lot of money for this bike, and I want it to remain nice. So that means any modifications I do have to be correct. You know, if a professional were to do it, how would they do it? I may have gone above and beyond with that grommet, but I just happen to have one in my collection of grommets. And um, and, and I will say, I only use <clears throat> the finest Wallace & brand grommets. Um, that's right, Wallace & grommets are the best. That's what I use. Good quality. Um, made, in the, uh, made in the UK. As I recall. And um, anyway, so that's what I used. I forget what size it was because I don't have the packaging for that exact one. Um, but I will assure you that it was not in one of my um, no name brand wa grommet assortments. I have one of these this whole box of various grommets. It's like the Harbor Freight Edition. It wasn't in here. It was in my um, in my pile of grommets that I bought. I just I go to the hardware store sometimes and I just pick up random things that I know I'll use sometime someday, and that has never failed me strategy wise because that particular grommet from Wallace and Grommets um, <clears throat> has uh, fit the bill. Now, how did I get a grommet in there? You might ask. Well, the thing is. You, the grommet is sized in such a way that I can't, you can't pass the cable through it and then pop it in. But what you can do is split the grommet in half. Well, on one side, not completely. And then just get it around the wire and stuff it in. And uh, if you look in here, you can get a good view of that. There she is. There's that pretty grommet. And I left this pretzel knot in here so that the cable can't be snagged and uh, cause damage to the plug here. It's a very strategic move I made. Wallace and brand grommets. Anyway, so there you go. We've got it all set up. Um, all the cables tucked and rolled and happy and sad. I like it. I did confirm that that port is turned on with the ignition switch. Not that I thought otherwise, but, you know, you never know. Um, this thing is going to live on the, uh, on the flow charger until it hits the road, and then it'll be on its own. Um, one of the things that I've learned, <coughs> two things. These are generally high-drain um, electronics that um, Honda has used, which means that when this when this bike is just sitting here, um, going fast, sitting still, um, it is using power. And the problem is motorcycle batteries tend to be very small. So even though it, I mean, your car does the same thing, right? Well, mine does. 
Um, so, you know, your car is using power even when it's just sitting there in the driveway. Well, same thing with your motorbike because, you know, advanced electronics being what they are, you know, it just constantly drains the power. That all having been said, um, you can reduce that drain by turning off the remote. I've talked about this before. That's your flasher. Make sure this is red. Okay. If I hold it down, suddenly it's broadcasting to the ignition switch whenever it's within range. And that means the ignition switch is in a constant state of readiness, waiting for you to press it. And uh, that increases the battery drain on the remote and on the ignition switch. So we turn that off when we're not using it. Turn off your toys when you're not using them. That's the moral of the story. But this is a handy little glove box. That's exactly what it's meant for, by the way. Um, and we get the phone into view of the driver. And uh, I really like the placement. But I'm going to go ahead and kind of play with this for a moment. See if I can't set up my phone. You know, maybe I'm going to do this. Switch the phone this way, and then I, I can snap it in so that it actually seems to be more in line with the center line of the handlebar. And I can move my, uh, my little charge cable here this way. And do that little clip there. See, we're not putting zip ties up here in the, in the, uh, in the, in the handlebar area. Not because we're racist against zip ties or nothing, because I love me some good, I'm a, I love me some good zip ties. But I also love me some good resale value too. And I don't want my handlebars getting polluted with zip ties. Yeah, there we go. So then I can just tuck the cable in like that, snap that, and look at this. Look at this. Right where we need her. It's not getting stuck, it's not pinching, nothing. And I could loosen up this mount. Maybe angle it. I can angle it at the uh, at the speedometer. That's just admitting guilt. Um, if I go like this, if I do that, I can record myself driving. Ooh. I mean, I can always reposition the mount, but I kind of like this. It also positions, you know, this might be the best way to mount it because, see, what that's going to do is it's going to give me the ability to... Um, uh, use my navigation, number one. But number two, I can film as I drive. So that means my first so my first ride on this bike, I can get it on camera. But it does one other thing, and that is if it rains or any water gets on the bike, it's going to get um, it's going to run downward rather than wick sideways into the phone. Got it plugged in right now, but of course my ignition switch is off. Yeah, no ignition switch. <clears throat> you know, guys, I think I'm. I think this is what I'm gonna do, and I can use my my GPS with it mounted this way as well. What do you think? Think I should leave it this way? I think I should, and I can still tuck away this this cable here. Um. There's no cable management on this, but that's okay. That's cool. I like this. This is perfect, guys. All right, let's get back to landscape mode. So, yeah, I'm really gearing up for this, uh, for this my, my first ride. I'm um, really getting psyched. I got my helmet. I got my plate. I got my custom plate frame. I got my phone mount all sorted out, all done professionally, too. I mean, this is professional grade. Now, about the cable. So this is going to wear out. You'll notice that, you know, while I try to avoid, a, um, you know, any sharp... Here, let me show you what... Let me show you what I mean, Vern. Um, so if I go up in here, <clears throat> if we look at the mo the motion of the cable, it's right up there at the top. There really... There really is no flex. You see, 
I zip tied it close to where the cables come out of the, uh, the frame, see? So there is no real movement. Now, if I zip tied my, uh, my, my phone cable over here, the cable will be doing one of these. But what's really happening up there is there's a little bit of torsion, not a ton of flex of that cable. Um, so we're going to reduce the wear and tear on the cable itself. And that's really quite important. Um, and of course, we got a grommet up in there. Cable's not going nowhere. <laughs> and we won't get water in there either. Um, kind of liking this, actually. But this cable will get worn out. It's a fact of life. It's replaceable. I'm not concerned. Uh, four foot cable is plenty long enough. I didn't have to. The cable I was going to use is like 20 feet long. And I got it for $5. You know, something like this, It's it looks quality, but really? <laughs> probably not. Judging from the store I got this from, it's probably bottom of the barrel. Yeah, this is the bin that that came from. I don't recall what size it was. I only had one. Um, so that is, uh, that is a moot point at this point. Oh, so excited. My first ride's coming up. What else did I got to, what else do I got to do? All right, this plate frame, the paint, we're going to let that cure for a couple of days before I really start to handle it and start putting torque on it. This paint stays soft for a little while after it's applied. I should probably actually throw this in the oven uh, for, for a wee bit. Um, that might not be a bad idea. Just throw it in the oven, bake it um, for a couple hours at low temperature. And that's how you harden your, your enamel. Right, Tommy? Right, Tommy? That's how you harden your enamel? Yeah, you want to harden your enamel. Yeah, you do. You want nice hard paint. Yeah, you do. Yes, you do. <clears throat> this little guy. I swear, he had to have been the runt of the litter. Um, just such a quirky little cat. And he's so, so frail. Always has been. We've had him for, she's three years now. And he's always been this frail little thing. Very quirky personality. Absolutely quirky. And he's licking my feet. Yes. Oh, here comes his brother. Hey, Oreo. Oreo is just outgoing and very boisterous, very alpha. Yeah, he is. This guy, he couldn't be more beta. Kappa, maybe? <laughs> I don't know. And this guy, he wants to be alpha, but Oreo beat him to it. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. I wanted to get a look at what that looks like. That's not bad. So I went with silver for two reasons. I have a ton of it. So for my car stereo business, I use about one half to three quarters of a can of silver uh, paint on my um, on my face plates uh, for the Pioneer stereos. I can't use any more of that because I can't tilt the can enough to get, because then it starts to spatter and I never use a can more than once. I use it for one painting session and then it goes in the trash. It's wasteful, but it's how I have to do business. So I have like three or four cans quarter full cans of silver paint but it also happens to be the accent color <laughs> of the bike now that plate frame comes in um comes in black and there isn't one that comes painted silver it's either chrome or black or so i bought a black one and that silver paint complements the rest of the bike perfectly it also stands out one of the things you don't want on a motorbike whether it's a scooter or a large bike. <laughs> you see what he just did there? He's calibrating and then he bolts. Yeah, 
Cats are fun. Um, so with the bike, yeah, with bikes, you, you want them to stand out. You want them to, you don't want them to be hidden in the shadows. You want to be seen. So that's why I went with a red bike versus a silver one or a black one. Not that they sold them in black. But <clears throat> I, I think, you know what it is? I have a thing about silver bikes. I think they're beautiful. But I was nearly killed on one. So <laughs> you understand where I'm coming from. <clears throat> Um, so yeah, I'll never buy a silver bike because it's bad luck and yeah, but that looks, that looks so good. It just looks good. It looks good. You know, it looks like a touring bike, a proper touring bike, which is what I'm kind of going for. Uh, now if I could just, I thought about putting a luggage box on this, but here's another thing. Safety wise, um, a luggage box will stick out further than the taillight. And you got to think, people are driving SUVs, trucks now. They're not going to see the taillights if there's a box. If they're at the right, at the wrong angle, the right angle or the wrong angle, they're not going to see the taillights. Even if you get a tail box with lighting built in, I mean, that's, you know, that would probably solve the issue. But uh, most of them don't have built in lighting. And if they do, it's not DOT compliant. So it's not bright enough, it's not the right color. So we're going to just not do a tail box. So. All right, guys. That's enough for now. Thank you for watching. And when I do get out on my first run, I'm going to take you guys along with me. We're going to put the first couple of miles in this bike. Probably do like 50 or 60 miles in one run. We're going to go from zero miles all the way to however many I can stuff in that one particular ride. Just waiting for good weather. And we're getting a foot of snow tomorrow. New Hampshire is a great place to live. But the weather can be unpredictable sometimes. All right. That's all I got for you guys. Thank you for watching. What are you doing? Oh, you now too, huh? <laughs> One of these little bastards stole. Actually, it was him. I know it was him. I was t I took the um <clears throat> the access cover off so I could get a good look at the um you know just see how it how getting spark plug replacements done and shit just kind of see see what see what's what you know so I took one of the clips off a little push clip push pin and I set it on the floor I turned around and I saw something in the shadows I or I could feel something coming up I didn't really I knew it was a cat whatever I look back, and the fucking clip is gone. I haven't found it since. So I had to go to the dealer, and I had to buy more clips. Now I buy a whole bag of them. Here and there. Just in case. So the little push lock clip things, I got a bunch of those. All right, I'm out. Let's just watch these guys for a moment. Brothers being brothers. Don't worry. I clip their nails regularly. They can't hurt each other too bad. Well, they never have anyway. Oh, actually, no, I take that back. One of them got a claw right in the face. Cats just do what they do. You just got to let them be cats. I think a lot of it is they're practicing their hunting. They're practicing their, you know, their, um, their defense skills on each other. And uh, my thought on that is let them do it because, I mean, they're not going to hurt each other. They're not. You know, they're not going to kill each other. Uh, the way these guys play is actually very friendly. Did you see that? They're very friendly with each other. I mean, after they get finished attacking each other, they're going to go back upstairs and start licking their faces. It's just they have to practice. You know, they have to be because they, they, you want them to be able to defend themselves. And um, you're not gonna, you're not gonna stop them from doing that. You know, you're not gonna stop them from doing their natural things. You know, what comes natural to them, and that is, you're, <laughs> he's whining. You see something moving, you gotta put your claws into it. You gotta protect yourself. You gotta defend yourself. Yeah. <clears throat> the animal kingdom 
knows how to take care of its own. They don't need our help. What they love getting rubbed down. Oh, they love it so much. And then your ears scratched and their necks massaged. And yeah. Don't worry. When it comes to defense, they got it. Although, I know we have a mouse problem in this house. I have found evidence of it. But these guys haven't killed a single mouse. God forbid. No, 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 no. They get all the scratches, but no. You won't catch a mouse for daddy. If only. If only.